Ah, the sound of shaking animal intestines. I mean, strings, which are traditionally made out of cat gut. But regardless of what it's made out of, when a string vibrates, it does so with the ends fixed to the instrument. This means that it can only vibrate in certain ways, sine waves, like a jump rope with one bump or two bumps or three or four or some combination of these bumps. The more bumps, the higher the pitch, and the faster the string has to vibrate. In fact, the frequency of a string's vibration is exactly equal to the number of bumps times the string's fundamental frequency. That is, the frequency of vibrations for a single bump. And since most melodious instruments use either strings, or air vibrating in pipes which has the same sinusoidal behavior, it won't surprise you to hear that musicians have different names for the different ratios between these pitches. In the traditional western scale, one to two bumps is called an octave, two to three is a perfect fifth, three to four is a perfect fourth, then a major third, minor third, some other things that aren't in the scale, and from eight to nine bumps is a major second, or whole step. If you play a few of these notes together, you get the nice sound of perfect harmony. Hence the name for this pattern of pitches, harmonics. In fact, a sound that matches one of the harmonics of a string can cause that string to start vibrating on its own with a resonant ringing sound. And a bugle playing taps uses only the notes in a single series of harmonics, which is part of why the melody of taps rings out so purely, and why you can play taps with the harmonics of a single guitar string. Harmonics can also be used to tune string instruments. For example, on a violin, viola, or cello, the third harmonic on one string should be equal to the second harmonic on the next string up. Bassists and guitarists can compare the fourth harmonic to the third harmonic on the next string up. But then we come to the piano. Or historically, the harpsichord or clavichord, but either way, the problem is this. It has too many strings. There's a string for each of the 12 semitones of the Western scale, times seven. If you wanted to tune these strings using harmonics, you could, for example, try using whole steps. That is, you could compare the ninth harmonic on one key to the eighth harmonic two keys up, which works fine for the first few keys. But if you do it six times, you'll get to what's supposed to be the original note an octave up, which should have twice the frequency. Except that our harmonic tuning method multiplied the frequency by a factor of nine eighths each time, and nine over eight to the sixth is not two. It's 2.02728652954129541 etc. If you tried harmonically tuning a piano using major thirds instead, you'd multiply the frequency by five-fourths three times, or 1.953125. Still not two. Using fourths, you'd get 1.973, not two. Fifths gives 2.027 again, and don't even try using half-steps, you'll be off by almost 10%. And this is the problem. It's mathematically impossible to tune a piano consistently across all keys using perfect, beautiful harmonics. So we don't. Most pianos these days use what's called equal-tempered tuning, where the frequency of each key is the twelfth root of two times the frequency of the key below it. The twelfth root of two is an irrational number, something you'd never get using the simple ratios of harmonic tuning. But its benefit is that once you go up twelve keys, you end up with exactly the twelfth root of two to the twelfth, or twice the frequency a perfect octave. However, the octave is the only perfect interval on an equally tuned piano. Fifths are slightly flat, fourths are slightly sharp, major thirds are sharp, minor thirds are flat, and so on. You can hear a kind of wah 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 effect in this equal tempered chord, which goes away using harmonic tuning. But if you tune an instrument using the 12th root of 2, as most pianos, digital tuners, and computer instruments are, you can play any song in any key, and they will all be equally and just slightly out of tune. This Minute Physics video is brought to you in part by Audible.com, the leading provider of audiobooks across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. If you go to audible.com slash minutephysics, you can try Audible out by downloading a free audiobook of your choice. I just read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. It's a fantasy novel with a very music and scientifically oriented protagonist, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. You can download this audiobook or a free audiobook of your choice at audible.com slash minutephysics, and I'd like to thank Audible for helping me continue to make these videos.